Hey guys, John here, and we're back in Lightroom today uh, doing a little bit of a quick tutorial. Uh, we're going to be creating a black and white image, and we're going to be focusing on kind of a high contrast image, and we may jump into using the uh, split toning effects of Lightroom to get kind of an interesting final product. Um, let's just start with a quick uh, graduated filter here from the bottom up. We're just going to go like this, uh, set everything back to a nice default so we're not destroying everything there. And then uh, maybe just a quick bump up in the exposure in the shadows just to bring that foreground back into the image. Um, so that's a pretty good start uh, to this photograph. I think we're in good shape to go to black and white now. Um, so I'm just going to click on the black and white button here, and the first thing that you might say is, well, this is kind of flat, and you've probably done this before with your own black and white photos, and the reason you get kind of a flat image when you do this is just because uh, a neutral black and white can be quite boring. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of play around with my whites and blacks and that's going to kind of set my white and black point of the image which will help add a little bit of contrast. So I'm going to bring my white point up and drag my black point down and that adds a little bit of contrast to the image in front of us. Um, we can also play with the clarity slider, maybe just bump that up a little bit to get a little bit more of that definition in there. Um, so this already is looking a lot better than the original black and white that was kind of flat and lost a lot of the detail and we're getting um, you know pretty good for the final image but we're gonna jump into our black and white mix panel this allows us to control the tones of the grays within the image based on the colors that that part of the image was made up of. So if we go back to before we went to black and white, if we just go to color, you can see there's some blues here, there may be some oranges and some yellows, maybe not a whole lot of green or red, but um, definitely some blues. So if we go back to our black and white, and if we play with the blue aqua sliders here, we might get something out of this. So we can go uh, to the left, and that will darken any of the pixels that made up that blue color or we can go to the right and that will brighten them. Now another cool thing is that, and I know I'm jumping around a lot here, is that you actually can control a little bit here. You have your temperature and tint slider, so your temperature slider can add blue. So if you add blue and then you go back to your black and white slider, now you have more blue to pull from so your image can get brighter or darker. Or you can go back up here and you can add yellow. And by doing this, you're actually lessening the effect. If I go all the way to the right here and I go back here, now there should be almost no blue in the image. And you can see as I drag this, almost nothing happens. However, if I come up to my yellow slider and I drag this down, we get a little bit more of an effect than we would have without that effect ha having been placed in there from the temperature slider. So I'm going to add a little bit of yellow, removing some of that blue from the image. And I'm also going to add a little bit of, well, let's, let's play around with it. Let's see what happens if I go towards the green side. Now this is going to look probably pretty terrible in color, but because we've manipulated the colors that make up the image, we can actually do some pretty cool stuff with the color mix panel. So now you can see we had some green in there, so now we can add some green. Uh, we might be able to do a little bit with the yellow just because there was some yellow in the image beforehand. Uh, orange might be able to do maybe a little bit. You're getting just a little bit behind those trees, so I'm gonna go all the way to the right, make that really uh, bright there. I doubt there's much red in the image, so we're just gonna leave that in the middle there. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, to the right with the aqua slider. Again, with the blue, we've removed most of that, so we're not really too worried there. Um, and our magenta and our purples are pretty much non-existent also. So now we've got kind of a cool little uh, contrasty image. We've done uh, quite a bit of change here. If we go to the history panel, so uh, you can see these are all the things that we've done with the image and we're right here. But say we go back to um, the original black and white. 
So this is the original black and white here. And then what we did was we added contrast. We played around with our different, you know, layers there and everything. Um, set our black point and all sorts of other things. Um, and now we're to this point. And it's just a little bit more contrast, a little bit more interesting. There's still um, some things that we can do though. So I'm going to hop into split toning. And what split toning really does it is, is it allows you to change the color of the highlights and the shadows independently. So now we have a black and white image. So our highlights and our shadows are pretty much made up of different tones of gray, uh, which is kind of nice when you're applying um, these split tone things here. So your balance slider in the middle here determines which one kind of, like how it blends. Uh, if you want the highlights to kind of uh, rule out, then you would have your balance shift in the highlights section. So you have uh, kind of four sliders here. You have the hue, so whatever hue you want your highlights and shadows to be, that's what this would turn into. So I'm going to go with kind of a purpley silver look, I think, but we'll play with it and see what happens. Uh, saturation controls the intensity of that effect, so if you go kind of maybe 30%, 25%, it's, you know, not too saturated. Uh, if you go all the way to 100%, you're getting really over the top, just like the typical saturation slider. And I'm going to do that just to start, just to show you how these uh, split toning things work. Um, and then, again, we can go with our shadows here. If we bump the saturation up, you can see now what happens is, we have the blues affecting our highlights and the reds affecting our shadows. Now, as you move the balance slider, if you go to the right, you're essentially removing, you're kind of taking that highlights filter and filling it over your shadows. So you're making the shadows less important as you're going to the right. So this essentially means that you're 100% filling with whatever your highlights color and or hue and saturation are. If you do the left, kind of the opposite happens. So I'm going to leave it in the middle for now and again we're not going to go 100%. We're going to go kind of in the uh, 20 or 30 percent range here for saturation. And then I'm going to play around with um, just kind of you know, different kind of colors that I think would look well together. Um, so let's go with a kind of a kind of a blue yellow look here. So I'm going with so when you think about the world and, and how light happens, you really tend to because the sun is yellow and the sun kind of hits your highlights and affects and creates your highlights. So your highlights tend to be on the yellow end. And then uh, because shadows kind of absorb that light and you kind of reflect the sky a little bit, uh, maybe the shadows would be a little bit more on the blue end. So that's kind of the direction that I'm going here. And uh, that's what I've got. Maybe I can bump the saturation up just a little bit more, maybe closer to 30% there. So now we have kind of this split tone image. It's still technically a black and white, even though there's little hints of color there, but it's much different. Uh, one thing I'm not liking is the kind of brightness of this centerpiece here. So I'm going to kind of just go in, uh, maybe something like this. Um, let's invert the mask. And we don't want to drop the exposure all the way. We need to set these back to uh, kind of where we need them. I'm going to drop the highlights down, maybe the exposure just slightly. If we go too far, things will start to get a little weird. Uh, so something like this, and I'm going to rotate it so that it kind of falls within this line here. And then I'm going to make it a little bit bigger in both directions here. Something like this. So I think that kind of cleaned it up a little bit. If I turn it off, you can see just, just that little bit uh, kind of helps kind of tone it down just a little bit. Um, so I like that. I can also go probably back here, maybe t turn the highlights down a little bit, maybe increase the shadows, uh, maybe add a little bit more contrast. 
like this. Maybe just a little bit of exposure. But I think this is a pretty cool, unique image. Um, it took a little bit getting there. And you could go in and even, uh, you know, something that kind of might actually be kind of cool to see. And I don't know how this will come out, but let's let's see what happens. So I, I have a light flow. Um, oops. Um, we'll go with kind of uh, maybe a medium sized brush here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drop the exposure and the shadows just a little bit here. And I'm just going to paint in on these clouds and just kind of darken up the undersides of them a little bit just to make them a little bit more kind of dramatic. Um, now, I don't know. I guess it looks actually pretty good. Just that little bit there um, kind of makes those clouds kind of punch out just a little bit more than than uh, they did before. So I like that. And if I turn off this adjustment brush, you'll see that effect. It's a very subtle, but I think I think it actually just kind of adds that extra layer to this image. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it. I hope you liked this quick tutorial. Um, it covered a lot. Um, went in a little bit more detail than I've done in the past. Uh, but that's kind of what I'm trying to bring to the channel now. I want to kind of do Photoshop, Lightroom, and then those digital drawing videos on the, on Friday usually uh, just for kind of fun uh, little thing. I know I'm not the best artist, but uh, I'll get better. I promise. So I hope you learned something today. If you did, please share this video. Um, it really helps, uh, you know, get more people viewing these. Uh, and if you did, of course, don't forget to like. And this, if, if this is your first time watching... Uh, full grab with the on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. I will see you again soon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.